Thank you, Olivier Ressler, for finishing with Amsterdam, because now we're moving for Meta Haven, the Amsterdam-based artist, graphic design, and filmmaker studio by Vinka Krug and Daniel van der Velden. You may already know them for Uncorporate Identity or Black Transparency or Can Jokes Break Down Governments, three books on the subject of low internet networks and public visibility. More recently, they directed in the documentary and according exhibition and website titled The Sprawl, dealing on the subject of contemporary propaganda. Please join me in welcoming Vinka Krupp and Daniel van der Velden. So um, the, the talk is called uh, Complex Belonging. Maybe we may have an image. Can I have an image? Um, so I wanted to start with uh, this conversation that I had yesterday with uh, Vesper, and, and she's not uh, she's just five, and um, <coughs> it's interesting because we use emoji as uh, adults use emoji as expression of uh, emotion, uh, but she uses it as hieroglyphs to actually tell a story. So she's really interested in unicorns um, and in in cycling. She's also a really good cyclist. Uh, so things like that, stars and hearts, of course. So, you know, in a sense, this is a sort of language that's sort of becoming. And in a way, the emoji is only the name we give to it now, but it, it might have different names. What I, what I find it interesting is here the inventiveness to kind of like create sort of your own language um, sort of together, I guess. Uh, but then she started to, to sort of send national flags and then that was the moment that the, the conversation became kind of more educational on my side with the elephant and the, the you know, the, the kind of like trying to sort of become this sort of school, yeah, like more like a class. And that was actually when the structure um, went a bit the other way. Um, <coughs> so the complex belonging, uh, I wanted to start with yesterday, I made some uh, anthropocenic memes. Um, and this is actually a good way to put yourself in the shoes of the character that you give the text to. Uh, and uh, we're interested in kind of like longer structures or we're interested in uh, what do these changes mean in a kind of longevity uh, kind of context. And we're also, I, I guess, very skeptical about the terminologies that are, that are being used. Uh, so here's some, some of these memes like point taken. Now, what about AI? If humans perish, why we Anthropocene? That's also a, a good question, I guess, because why do we call it the Anthropocene if, if it actually announces our uh, perishability? Uh, what if I told you that the internet is physical? I feel intense pain, I do too. Think of AI. Um, now back to Google, what it means to be alive, say that thing about time and free will. Um, uh, why do this? Because the, um, the the thing is that uh, we feel that this is kind of honest admission that talking about technology is a way to avoid talking about the things that we should be talking about. And actually we can already assume that technology is internalized in us. So we actually don't need to talk about it in that way. That's at least, and we try to, it's kind of a lesson for ourselves as well. Uh, we use technological words a lot, um, but we wonder what these words can stand for in a way. So these are stills from our new film, Possessed, uh, made together Mette Haven and, and Rob Schreuder. Uh, so it was a co-production with another director. Uh, and it's a film against the smartphone. I can say it as flatly as that. Can you see anything? Can we turn the lights a bit down, please, as I ask? Okay, so this is actually a quite dark shot. Um, so it is about... Um, putting our problematic relationship with ourselves and our devices on new terms. Um, and, and the film does not use words like smartphone or internet, etc. It really talks about this sort of internalized notion of technology, but it also has, has to do with imagining the future and the ability to imagine the future. And like Mark Wheatley said earlier that the future is a stranger, That's that I, I think really agree with that. Um, but at the same time, we need to have some form of agency or at least be in space where we can have this agency over the future. And that's what the film also addresses. Uh, could we turn the lights a bit down, please? Thank you. Okay, apparently not, but it's fine. 
this is technology. Great, thank you so much. Um, okay, so possessed. I'm just gonna try and go real quick. Um, and Alex, Alex Williams and Nick Cernick are the commentators. So there's the fictional voice and there's also Alex and Nick that, that are kind of like putting things in context. And one of the most nice scenes we, we thought was to bring our protagonist to this uh, destroyed uh, communist um, school in, in former Yugoslavia where she becomes kind of like confronted with all these books that are like left over there. So now she looks at class struggle and socialist revolution. And honestly, this is uh, someone who belongs to a generation who really didn't grow up even with the kind of memory of that. So it was kind of like as if she entered a sort of alien world. Um, so it is a kind of alien, this film is a sort of alien for communists. Um, possessed. So our, our turn to moving image was actually a, a conclusion of a, of, a, of a longer development that came out of sort of experimental graphic design. Um, where we are kind of very interested, of course, in working with um, kind of like more political or geopolitical tropes, but also very strongly uh, interested in, I don't know, new aesthetics. Uh, this was our work, previous work with Holly Herndon. M people may know this also from the last talk that we gave. Um, do you want the other slide or? <laughs> okay, maybe. <laughs> okay, it's fine. Um, uh, two years ago, we gave a talk here as well, and so it's wonderful to be back and then we showed this. So I tried to show as little as possible from that period, um, all the work with Holly, um, who is, continues to be our inspiration, is now working on a new album, uh, with in which involves a choir, and it's uh, super amazing. Um, so can't wait um, to to work on that. But also we, we are increasingly kind of interested in really telling our own stories and, and finding our own terminologies for, for things. So whereas Holly was very much strongly about pattern and emotion and about, of course, you know, notions of internalized technology and stuff like that, uh, our documentary, The Sprawl, Propaganda About Propaganda from 2015, 2016, wanted to address this sort of sprawling crisis of, of disinformation and see that in a way as a sort of new normal. Uh, uh, coincidentally, that's the name of a program where we uh, contribute to together also with Liam uh, at Strelka in Moscow. But um, the, the, this is the website for the sprawl. But it was also our way to introduce a sort of like very cheap sci-fi, like for example, this upside down world, which is really um, a kind of like a cheap trick to arrive at, a, at another look at reality. The film talks about propaganda, but instead of addressing propaganda, putting it on on a kind of like um, uh, on a table and looking at it from all sides, it tries to more kind of inhabit propaganda. So we have these screen gazers, we have more fictionalized scenes, and we have also interviews with Benjamin Breton, um, uh, P Peter Pomeranzev, and Mona, uh, Maria Mona Lisa Garavi. Anyway, so this is kind of like shows our development towards that. And this was also where the kind of like where the question of, of belonging became more and more important. Uh, in particular through the references uh, that, that are included in the film from, from Tolstoy's book about art uh, called What is Art? Which had a profound influence on our practice um, that's still working through. And this kind of like keeps, keeps on going. So the film is in partially, largely in Russian with English, lo long English parts interviews, for example. So it's sort of inhabit inhabiting propaganda. And this, the follow-up to that was Information Skies, which was nominated for the European Film Awards uh, for short film, but did not win. Uh, the Cannes nomination won, of course. Um, and it's been described as a post-truth essay film. Uh, and here we were very interested in cinematic texture uh, that we already started developing earlier and we're very interested in the cinematic texture in a kind of like me digital media environment. Uh, and also we're interested in anime. So this film also contains anime sections uh, that we created. And um, and it's a, it's a fictional story and, and that, that, that it's a fictional sequel to uh, The Sprawl. And what's most important about it, or one important element about it are the subtitles. 
because we, we, we believe in subtitles as design elements. We believe in them as part of a film, not as something that just appears over a film. So for example, when you have these yellow subtitles, it means something in regards to um, what kind of film you're watching. If there's yellow subtitles, it means that you're watching some sort of obscure art house film probably. Uh, which, you know, in turn also shapes part of your attitude towards the image. So it's a combination of textured um, cinematic footage and anime. And uh, it was made in a, uh, troubled times, and now the times are better, I guess. Um, so it's shown in various formats, etc. cetera. Uh, and this notion of belonging is, is strong in this film as well. So like I wanted to um, think a little bit with you about sort of contradictions and the promises of the of the super highway informational superhighway. Uh, in a sense, it's it's weird that terms like global village uh, are so recent and they feel like ancient. Uh, these are uh, screenshots from the iPhone about um, Russian locations where that will start mining cryptocurrency. So. You know, and that will not happen with clean energy, by the way. That will happen with uh, kind of really like fossil fuel. Uh, these are ways in which Russia tries to um, have remote regions earn money because these regions do have fossil fuels and they s they're setting up Bitcoin farms in these areas. Um, and it's quite interesting if you see the tone of voice of the global village communication modem, which is kind of like so... It's like a kind of globalization, but it's like on the terms of the United States, or on the terms of globalization, globalization on the terms of, of textbook globalization. And actually what is happening is, of course, a completely different uh, trajectory, as this Bitcoin story shows. Um, but we're also interested in the kind of softer ways in which this kind of like notion of planetary scale computation, as Benjamin Bratton calls it, lands in our everyday lives. Like, for example, this one, Joe Gift, Maybe that's not so much about computation, but John Cell certainly is. That's in Beirut. Uh, and there's no one called John Cell, obviously, but there, in a sense, there is now. So that's, that's, that's interesting. Um, or if you walk around in Calais, um, and then there's suddenly there's like, a, and there's no, nothing there, and then suddenly there's Starbucks, iconic Seattle based coffee house chain. Uh, or the, um, in, in, some, in, the, in the old studio of my dad, suddenly there's a box, and the box has the Amazon arrow, and that tells you actually the whole backstory. So this kind of still life digitalism, in a way. Um, so we're interested in ways in which um, certain things form soft evidence for other things. So we're not interested in the hard, hard, hard edge portrayal of technology, but we're interested in this kind of notion of soft evidence as it's um, mentioned, uh, or the title of the poem here by Ar Ariel Dorfman from 1988, um, which I'm not going to read now, but I can strongly recommend um, that you read. And it's a, it's a poem that was written under a uh, Chilean dictatorship, and it deals with loss, but it talks about how the blue sky, etc., and all these things are not really, um, they are not proof, and they are proof that something's wrong. Anyway, so complex belonging question. How about the transformation profonde de la condition humaine? The stories of the post-Anthropocene are, of course, always studies of new inequalities, of holographic pop singers versus faceless factory workers, from pamperer versus pampered to renderer versus rendered. The rendered are 21 years old. The future is a stranger, yes. Complex belonging is a question of longevity, of living relationships and livelihoods. How does the child explain it to you? Where does everybody go? What if you are stripped of your usual language? Task, try to build sentences about this world without using the word smartphone, internet, server park, infrastructure, AI, drone, etc. That's hard, and I say also to ourselves, but it's necessary to bring out new and better words for our life with contradictions, objects, and others. Tell stories, everyday science fiction, digital monasticism. Let's do it.
So today I heard a new, I learned a new word, uh, tacheron du clic, uh, which means digital laborers, and it's uh, really necessary that we use words like that, so we kind of invent new languages to talk about things, and I guess that's sort of a little bit the point of, of what I'm trying to, trying to get at. Um, we, uh, speakers have like a huge screen here with time running out, and I always run out of time when I want to do this thing, so please give me like, do I have like five more minutes, is that okay? Okay, great. So I wanted to end with, um, uh, after this uh, piece of ungraded and unmixed piece of possessed, uh, with music by Laura Halo and her reinterpretation of um, Stabat Mater, of course, uh, Pergolesi. I want to end with um, um, reading you a script uh, from our uh, film that we will start editing um, soon, actually kind of now-ish, called Hometown. And that is sort of like the maybe partially the embodiment of the, of the thesis about um, uh, complex belonging, uh, shot in Kiev and Beirut. So I'm going to end with a little reading. Hometown. In a tiny village, as small as four countries, well connected without phone or network, not one ship is mooring to the aerodrome. In this town, world famous and known by nobody, lives a retired woman aged five or six who isn't me unless you insist. Here's our epic. Don't worry, it's short. It's a secret that everybody has heard. Before we continue, let us agree on the time. The station clock, always reliable, wrongly says it's noon, made out of one and two. So let us agree, it's three. I'm kind of mocking the movement a little bit. Not that this shot will be with this text. It's like, it's, this is just a mock-up. We grew up with this, the semblance, probabilities, unlikelihood, revolving doors, and mirroring walls. Favors, bread, milk, sugar, self-made clothes, self-made currency, prayers for peace, almost impossible to be heard. Grandfather is a scientist. When he picks me up from school and I'm wearing the blue jumper, he says it's red. He holds in his, his hands, my hands, counts the fingers on each. How many? He draws a caterpillar, says it's a butterfly instead. How so, granddad? You're only joking. When it rains, the sun must shine. Overcast again, daytime, syntax error, laughed, solved. The sun is hiding in moonless blue. Here is where we disagree, where one and one makes three, because I say so, because it's me. But when one and one makes three because the law says so, that's not me, says who, and is such a so-called law that different from a law that says that one and one makes two? It wasn't me, or me. Actually, while here, I wasn't born in my hometown. Now, under the gaze of the satellites, between the nodes connected underground, overground, a crime was committed. A caterpillar got murdered in cold blood, dark purple, ink-like. We grew up with the seeming probabilities, unlikelihood, revolving doors, mirroring walls, many-sided coins, the coming and going of helicopters from there and to there, the TV news, the printing press was forced to close its doors. After school, in my hand, the melting ice cream drips. Once frozen, the glacier, now unleashed, tastes of fruit, the orchard of our ancient soil, and data center heat, you choose. Sunrise, simulation, nightfall, prepaid. I didn't kill the caterpillar, it was I who killed the caterpillar, never, not intentionally, my hometown. To this forgotten place, but retained in memory, on the very top of the deepest valley, covered by snow in blistering heat, I return, feeling fresh after a long, hard journey. I return there where I have never been. The station clock came to a standstill. It's always the same hour. Let's agree on a place. After thinking for long, I had the idea right away. I'll see you, I'll, I'll see you at dawn, where the road splits in two.
I was hit by the shrapnel. It also hit the ideological shell, the neighboring town, crumbling like sand cake. Our new tomorrow is the, like the blackbird song, a solemn voice, a silent pulse of tomorrow. As inheritance, seriously, I got the future of the ruins. Now in the sunken city, look around. People dwell, lost and entranced. They forgot about how children taught them what cannot be taught, a dawn of morality from within. Their children bear names of what cannot be named. Luca of light, Nadezhda of waiting, Alyosha of help. United we are in chaos. Once frozen, the solid mass, now a river becomes our life and washes away the memory banks of the town. Pay cut or power cut, there is no choice. Nightfall, a free for all, unleashing vertical fire, my hometown. Thank you, that's it.